Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, and I'm on another walk with the lovely Julia. Hello, lovely Julia. Hello. We are in Bedham. Have you ever been to Bedham before? Nope. No, I've been to Bedham before and I made a video about this. Pretty sure I've been to Bedlam, but not Bedham. Yes, working with you, Julia, <laughs> it's always Bedlam. But I thought it, you would appreciate this. I know you like old things, mm. I know you like woodlands, and I know you're not really into Christianity church as such, but I know that we've been to a few churches on our route looking at um, yew trees, and I thought you might be interested in a church that's in the middle of a wood. Well, quite. Okay, so um, we're going to go down and have a look at the uh, the Bedham Mission. It's a it, it's a church, but it's really a schoolhouse that was built in the Victorian period, um, very much for the rural community and in particular the charcoal burners' families, because as you can see around us, we are in coppiced wood. Yeah. So we're going to take a little route down this little path. And this is very rural. We're between Fittleworth and Whisper Green, Bedham. I mean, it's 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 now it's really just a lot of nice setback millionaires' houses by the looks of things. Mm. Um, but it wasn't obviously at one point in its history, and families would have lived here, workers um, on the on the estate, no doubt, whatever estate it was. Um, in this coppiced wood. I don't know whether these are chestnuts. There's some beeches I can see. But anyway. I left my book in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old identification. We will get I'm it not, I'm together. not very good at this. <laughs> but ahead, look at this beautiful old church. It seems really out of place. It's, it just looks like someone's picked it, it up and popped it here. Yeah, well, I gather that there was some uh, money that came in to um, help build it and it was set up as this mission. And, and I think up until the 50s, I'm trying to remember the facts, up until the 1950s um, were weddings taking place in here. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, it was a schoolhouse principally. And then on Sundays, I think the local vicar from Fittleworth would come and give service here. So we come in to the shell, uh, as you can see. Gosh, is that sheep's hair or something? I have or is that no human idea. hair? It kind of looks... Kind of looks have a look down there, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, a bit dodgy. Oh, may, look, maybe it's a hairdresser's. Who's, who, some sweepings from a hairdresser's. That is bizarre. Yeah, no, that's... Um, Odd. That's a bit gross, really. Anyway. Um, yeah, and it's at least one, two, three, four... At least five different scalps. Hair there. <laughs> scalps. Okay, let's moving swiftly. Let's on. move swiftly. On. So anyway, so this would have been the church. This would have been um, from what I read before. This is where the the school children, the children from the rural families, would have sat here and done their schoolwork every day on this side, and at the far side, I believe. Oh wait a minute, no, this must be the altar. Then yeah, so this bit which with the rounded asp end. Okay, so that there's, that something was it here some wooden sort of form oh yeah so that would have been closed off and um and then on a sunday people would come into worship because it's it's so rural it, this is why it's so tiny um and there are two little doorways actually from the road it looked like one. Oh, look at this oh wow don't touch it no a little... Somebody with a yappy dog coming past, but are they maple leaves, tiny maple leaves. They do look like that, don't or, they? Oriental I'd... maples or something. There aren't any around here, so it's come from someone's garden. I've got a feeling someone uses it for um, their little spiritual things. Well, I mean, it looks like it, doesn't it? It's an old house of God, so well, presumably, yeah, quite. Um, somebody did. Of course, it's in a ruinous state now and yeah. held up by these supports. Um, there's a little, what would have been a bell, a little bell um, cot at the top. I wonder if I can get a better view by just coming up through this, through this wood here. I mean, I ha as I said before, I've made a proper video where I give you sort of chapter and verse of what I know about the place, but I wanted to bring you, the audience, and uh, of course the lovely Julia, just to this little spot in the woods, mainly because... Um, the other thing is that we are at the beginning of spring yeah, and it's a very uh, important time. Bluebells getting ready to come out. Are they bluebells? I think so. Oh yeah, let's have a look. Sure look like it, don't they? Yeah, 
No, I think you're right. This will be um, an absolute haven to come and, and have a gander at when, when they're all out. Yeah, lovely moss. Look at that. It's like a miniature forest. Open up, look. Wow, that is cool. And you know, from my my little little bit of reading on trees and what you were telling me also, Julia, about the fungus that mm. lives sort of beneath the surface or just at the roots mm -hmm. that makes the trees talk to each other. It connects all the tree roots together and allows information and nutrients to pass along. Yeah. Love to come go on search at some point for some mushrooms. You know, oh, see what yeah, wild all sorts mushrooms. of different types of fungi we find. Oh look, lichen. Lichen lichen, how the heck do you say it anyway? I don't know. Just off doing its job, breaking down the uh, the uh, waste products. This is what I like about a real wood. You've got the wood just scattered about, just decaying. As it should. Feeding the ground, a haven for um, all sorts of insects and other invertebrates and things. Yep. Um, and then this mass of leaves which have come down in the autumn, just scattering just and slowly decaying. But what's surprising is that it hasn't yet decayed, that it takes so long well, to actually decay. I mean, it's, it's already a lot thinner than it would have been. And you know, it's, it's, it is decaying, it just yeah, takes time. It just takes time. Oh, hang on. There's more of that weird hair. What look. the heck? It's got to be some hairdresser's thing, but these are... Pretty sure they usually just stick it in a rubbish bin and put it out with I mean, normal the, rubbish. But, but these are like scalps of, you know, I mean serious shavings of head, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I know in, in some in some spiritual spiritualities, um, you know, you, you don't just chuck your hair, you know, the, the, the hair you cut off away, you bury it or something, but this is not buried. You've got every type of hair imaginable. I mean, it's got to come from a hairdresser's. Where else would you get this sort of nonsense? But why bring it up here? All around us, some of the trees have clearly fallen at some time, possibly as long ago as 1987, who knows? And we get these, these chunks. And actually, we've just been looking at some of these bits of tree. And this one here is actually, we've done a bit of detective work here. It looked like it was the root of a tree that had fallen but we don't think it is because behind us here looks like this is the other half of it or the the main trunk that uh, it fell over it's quite fun doing a bit of detective work and then up ahead where Julia is try and climb up towards her it's the root it's not so easy to get up the steep bank we don't really know this, whether it's a beach or no, a you. No, what was, what was that big tree? That I, oh, if we can ID that tree that uh, that we were looking at with the lattice work at Petworth Park. Oh yeah. This is the same thing. Similar thing. Because look at that, the way, it, the, way the, the layers of bark twist over each other. Oh yeah. Let's come and have a look at the roots. The came down in a, in a storm. Yeah. It that I, like it was healthy apart from that. It's come down and brought with it some of the uh, what looks like sandstone here as well but it's been here some some years mm. it takes a lot of time for a tree to decay doesn't it even though it's been helped and i presume it, it went across the path there was a sort of path which i think was used by whoever is managing the site not that these trees are managed but there's some terrific i think they're all beach Beach and yew trees i think is what we're concluding isn't it yeah there's definitely Mostly. just a couple of uh, yews in there and um, some holly, definitely some holly, and some wild daffodils here. Let's get a bit of colour in whilst we're climbing about. These are quite small ones. I don't know if they have a different name, the small daffodils. Very delicate looking. And then my tree nymph is trying to get up the tree. Actually, I've just realised this is definitely beach, what you're in, because look at these. Oh, I'm going to fall. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that very clearly, but that is a, a beech bud. That's they're long and narrow. That's what I've learnt so far. And of course, all around us is 
beech leaves, the dead beech leaves from last year. Hi. You happy in your little hammock? Well, it's not really a hammock, but you know what I mean. A triuk. A triuk. A triuk. Let's forget I didn't say that. So if I, I, I didn't say come that. and pick you up tomorrow, okay, you'll be all right here with the trees. Oh yeah, yeah, right. No, no. No, no. I've got my coat. But anyway. Um, I just thought it was a, an interesting place to come to. Yeah. Definitely on a on a you know on a walk, the uh, Bedham Mission, as it was called, a missionary church to educate the children in the rural places during the Victorian period, and to bring a bit of religion. And actually, look, if you come over here, you'll get some of the view because we get an amazing view from here. You come down here. Look, there's some very small horses as well. <laughs> oh, beg your pardon. Yes, donkeys. And there, you get a view going north across the uh, Sussex Weald up towards, I'm guessing we're looking up towards Horsham. Well, another random little walk from the Bald Explorer and the lovely Julia. Julia, thank you so much for thank you. coming along and taking it all in. Thank you for bringing me along and freaking me out. Yeah, well, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> Although you didn't do that by yourself. No. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Until the next time, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, and um, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Do you remember where we parked the car? That away? Yeah. I think so.